Hi, and welcome back to the Lisa Nichols Show, where we come together to get the mindset, the experience, the how-to, the tools to transform our lives, to elevate our lives into that thing that we know we deserve and most importantly, we desire. I'm yeah. here with my boy, Matt Gill in the house. What, what? He is the secret sauce <laughs> of motivating the masses. You would not believe how many things he does. He stands in front of hundreds, thousands of people, inspiring them on a daily, weekly, monthly, and annual basis. I'm excited to be able to play with him as much as I can. Most of the times, he's reading and commenting to the things that you're saying and, and making sure that I see them. And today, he's in front of the camera so that we can find out some things that you want to learn. What I love about this uh, episode is that we're going to be taking your comments, your mm. questions, and uh, digging deep, digging into what you want to know the most. And what Lisa always says is that this is not a monologue. This is a dialogue and back and forth. And so your comments are getting read, they're getting heard, and today's episode is a juicy, juicy conversation. Let's dig in. <laughs> This question actually comes from the episode um, called Be Confident to Achieve Your Vision. And this question comes from Molly. And Molly says, my question is, what if I don't know what my goals are? And I'm actually going to add in the word passions as well, because this was part of the, the, the comments that were in right. there. People were unclear. What if they don't know what their goals or passions are? Um, because they seem to be all over the place. Yes. So um, what I know, this isn't the case for everyone. But a lot of times when you're all over the place, it's because you're looking all over the place. Yeah. You're looking to the left, you're looking to the right, you're looking at people, and you're trying a little bit of everything. Ooh, that feels good for them. Ooh, that feels good for them. And so you're trying to see if it works for you. Right. And you find yourself spinning your wheels and spending a lot of time uh, distracted. Right. So I would say ground yourself. Get back to your center by asking a few key questions. You might want to write these down. So question number one, is what brings me joy. Don't try to put it in a job. Mm -hmm. Don't try to place it in a career. Don't try to monetize it. Don't try to make a living. Because a lot of times we mistake the what we like with the how we're gonna do it. We merge them too soon. And discover the what. And I say I write about this in my book, Abundance Now, mm -hmm. that you can have 100% of the what with 0% of the how, right? Mm -hmm. So what brings you joy? Real simple, real simple. When I was in my mid twenties and I got in fire, well, my late, latter twenties, about 26, 27, and I got in fire from five jobs already. <laughs> Ugh, it was a difficult, difficult five, six years. And I, I just, I, I realized that I wasn't good at a lot. Mm -hmm. I, and I, I, my first jobs were in, I was an order desk clerk, I was a receptionist, I was an office manager, a horrible office manager. And I realized that in all those roles, you have to have some level of organization. Well, I'm organized now, but I wasn't organized then. I'm relatively organized now. <laughs> so <clears throat> I got fired from five different jobs. And I remember lying in bed, unemployed, frustrated. My car had gotten repoed. My rent was due. My roommates were upset at me. <laughs> it was like a really, really bad day. And um, I saw something on television that, that shifted everything. And the first thing I did was I made a list of the things that brought me joy or the things I thought would bring me joy. Some of the things on the list I hadn't even done yet. And believe it or not, I still remember the list. Now it's a very simple list. It'll mm -hmm. speak to where I was at 26. I said, I wanna help people. Right. I said, I wanna travel the world. I said, I wanna carry a laptop. <laughs> At the time, if you had a laptop, you're really important. <laughs> and I wanted to wear a black suit because wow. all important people wore a black suit right. in my head at that time. And then I added to that list over the years and I kept allowing the list to drive my decisions. Mm. So when you're all over the place, it's because you don't have a core. Right. You're all over the place trying, let me try this and let me try this and let me try this and let me try this. Where's your core? What brings you joy? Detach it from how to make a living, detach it from someone's approval, Detach it from what your friends are doing. Detach it from how you're going to get it done. Just what brings you joy. And I can almost guarantee that your thought of what you have to do to make that list come to life is far more narrow than all, all of the things that are available mm -hmm. that can make that list come to life. Um, I didn't know what I would do to make that list come to life, but the very first thing I did actually was that list. I, everything I've done since I made the list 
has inc incorporated the list. Right. So I began to not only get interviewed by companies, I began to interview them. Mm. And that was a bold move, seeing so I had like zero talent, like zero, <laughs> you know, or that I knew about. I, right. I was I was undiscovered at the time, so I wasn't Lisa Nichols. Right. You know, um, and so the, my first job was I did customer service for a new software company who who distributed and sold and distributed software up the West Coast. Uh -huh. And so it was my job to support all the new clients. This is when computers were just coming out. I'm dating right. myself, but that's okay. <laughs> I like the way I date myself. Um, computers just coming out. So we would sell them the software, then tell them you need a computer right. to make it work. So then we'd sell them the computer and I would meet the computer at the office, take it out the box, wow. plug it up, boot up the DOS system. Right, right. Come <laughs> on, now that is old school. As some of you don't know about DOS, don't worry about it. I boot up the DOS system and then I train them on the software. So it required me to help people. Mm -hmm. And I traveled up and down the coast. I had my own laptop to, to, to integrate with the computers. Right. And of course, I bought a black suit, right? <laughs> and so I just allowed my list to come from me. Right. And then I began to live through my list. Now, 20 years later almost, I'm a long way away from installing software. Matter right. of fact, y'all don't even let me touch the software. Right? She ain't joking. Right, I, I'm, I don't do Technology, it. she doesn't touch. Right, right, right. But, but this was my path right. to get me here. Right. So most people want to begin at the very end. Right. You're measuring your beginning with someone else's middle. Right. And so what's your beginning? I'm so grateful that I did that work because that was the doorway that led me to the stages that I'm on now and the trainings that I do now. And so I would recommend that one, become very aware of what brings you joy. Mm. And two, begin to explore. Don't try to make it your lifestyle. Make it your hobby. Don't yeah. make it the thing you do for fee. Allow it to be the thing you do for free. And allow that thing that you would do for free to possibly morph into what you do for fee. But allow it and give it the ability to never change into to something that you will do for a fee. It might be that thing that just brings you joy. Right. You go to your day-to-day, -day, it's not your job anymore, now it's your investor. Right. And your investor allows you to spend time, money, resources, doing the thing that brings you joy. So many times in this world of entrepreneurship, we think we have to do our passion as a living. Right. No, you just need to do your passion. Right. It might be your weekend thing. It might be your quarterly thing. And so, Walk toward what feels good. And and then don't over don't overcomplicate what feels good. People think that the thing that's that's your passion or your goals, it gotta be difficult and a heavy right. lift. No, the hardest thing for me was running this company. The easiest thing was running my mouth. Mm -hmm. You know, and so it's right under your belt, like it's right under your nose many times. The thing that you're not valuing because you do it so effortlessly. Right. You and I are the same way. You've been, you know, entertaining for years. You were right. writing scripts and doing plays when you were five. Right. You're just doing them in your living room, right? right? I have a picture of me in front of my grandmother's um, uh, fireplace at five years old, my hands out. It looks like I literally am on Broadway. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and my grandmother would always say, do a show, Put, give granny a show. Right. And so I was always preparing to be the me that I always was. Right. And so when you're looking at your goals or your passion, don't go too far out there. Right. Come far in here. So there's value in looking at what you already do. And like cuz I I think a lot of people don't don't value what they what comes so naturally to them. And and they discredit that and they, that there has to be the struggle, there has yes. to be the the education and I have to spend four, six years in college and yeah, right. It has to be painful. Right, but it's really who you are. Yeah, so if it's something, when we talk about your core, your passion, then it should, it should your passion shouldn't be something you discover. Mm. It should be something you uncover. Mm. Yeah, you, sh you don't discover your passion. Mm -hmm. You don't discover your desires. You uncover them. And the very act of uncovering is to to move through all the logic, move through all the it has to be hard, move through all the am I worthy, move through the how am I going to do it. That'll right. stop you. Cause like, but, but I don't know how. Okay, great, I didn't ask you how yet. Right. We're still at the what. Like if you let the what live, the how will show itself. You stay in action, the more you're in action walking toward that thing that feels good, the more you're like Dora the Explorer, you know, 
you know, turning over pillows and discovering more. But you right. gotta be willing to put the hat on, put the turn the light on, and you gotta be willing to go out there and say, this is the area, this is the zip code that I'm happy in. You'll find the block you should be on, right. then you'll find the house you should be in, then you'll find the room you should be in. But first, what's the zip code? Right. And that's all I did, I just found the zip code. I wanna run my mouth. <laughs> I want to inspire people. I want to make people feel good. I want to wear a black suit. I want to carry a laptop. I have no idea why. <laughs> and I want to travel the world. And so I started with that in a very different vein than I do it now. Mm -hmm. But I kept playing in the zip code. Then I found my block. Then I found my house. And then I found my room. And I, mm -hmm. I don't think that that kind of uh, discovery is available to just some of us. Right. And then from there, your goals will emerge. Because your goals should be in alignment with your greatest beliefs and your greatest desires. Otherwise, you're just setting goals because everybody else is setting goals. Mm. Set goals because they draw you closer to the woman you want to be remembered as. They draw you closer to the man you want to be talked about after you've transitioned. Like that's a big statement, but you want to live your life writing the story of your life. Right. You want to live your life writing the story of your life. I know this is gonna sound morbid, but it's real, it's juicy, it's delicious. Mm. You wanna live your life writing your eulogy. Mm -hmm. Like when you do that, you're like, whoa, you'll stop sweating the small stuff. <laughs> like don't sweat the small stuff. You don't want it to be in your eulogy. Right. <laughs> right? Right. Right, so you're not living your life. Your life is finite. Your legacy is infinite. You're writing your legacy, not your life story. So what I love about this show is this is always the right message for the right person. Mm. Like just, it comes at the specific time mm -hmm. that somebody needs it. And Annie wrote in that I have so much to say of how this show has been so much confirmation. And I am just thankful that I joined this tribe. This was the best decision I've ever made. Mm. Annie, thank you. I appreciate that acknowledgement. It lands right on my heart. Um, I get how words are oxygen. Mm because they're the doorway to a new possibility. And for me, uh, when I was looking for oxygen, and at times when I still am, I'm not out of this journey, that words breathe life into us. Mm. They breathe possibility into us. And what I love about this show personally, and what I get to experience, I get to witness, I get to help facilitate, is that for a moment while you're listening, you get to see yourself through someone else's lenses. Mm. And I was just sharing with a friend how when I was 19, this woman told me who she saw me as. And that person was foreign to me. Mm. She said, I watch you. She was, she was one of my professors in my freshman year of college. She said, I watch you because I'm an American, I'm a women's American lit professor. And I've read about Shirley Chisholm and Ida B. Wells and Maya Angelou and Angela Davis and, and she's rattled off all these amazing women of change. And she said, and I believe that I've been given the gift of watching a young version of them. Wow. I didn't even understand what she meant. I was, mm. I was 19 mm. and she said, you're gonna run into a lot and you're gonna have to forge a lot of roads on your own. She said, so if your skin, if your chin, your nose, and your forehead are more bruised than the rest, it's because everyone is following a path that you made. Hmm. I had no idea what that meant. I had no idea, I was like, yeah, whatever, lady. <laughs> you know, that sounds nice, and I'm sure I'll understand it later. Right. But in that moment, I knew enough in my young 19 years to borrow her lenses of me mm. so that she, the life she was speaking into me, I can hold on to until I could understand. And here I am 30 years later and I understand. And so thank you for the acknowledgement. Allow this show to give to you and what some beautiful people have given to me and that's life. And that's not saying we are life. Um, as teachers, that's saying we are all life and we get to breathe life into each other and we get to borrow the breath that someone else gives to us. So it's my honor to breathe with you <laughs> and pour into you. I take the, I take the opportunity, um, 
I take the opportunity very seriously. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for, thank you for sitting beside me, standing in front of me when mm-hmm. necessary, um, following me when it's appropriate, and dancing beside me when I don't want to do this by myself. I think that no one wants to be in the valley by themselves, mm. nor do we want to be on the mountaintop alone. Right. So it would not feel nearly as fun <laughs> and as exciting if I didn't have you in the journey. Thank you. Thank you. So remember, my friends, this is not a monologue. It's a dialogue. We told you that at the beginning of the show, right? So now we need your comments. What did you think? What was an aha for you? What was a hashtag? B-O-L. Breakthrough? Out loud. <laughs> what was that thing? What was that thing that made you go, ah, yeah, I forgot about that. Or I didn't know such a thing. So comment and share. Don't just go on this journey by yourself. Right. There's someone in your tribe that wants to learn these this stuff too. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, click the button so that way you can get notified every time we get a new episode that's coming out. Oh my God, I love the people who say, I can't, I just, I'm so excited when I get notification that a new episode is up. And right. you know, they're not long, nothing's over 20 minutes. So it's gonna take you, some things are five, some things are seven, some things are three, right? So subscribe, make sure that you're in the tribe because this is your tribe. This is your community. Right. We are your family. We right. are your extended. We are your thinkers. We are your believers. We are your, we're the unicorns, <laughs> right? We're the unicorns that understand you. And Matt's your brother. Yes. I'm your sister in prosperity and possibility. We love you. We appreciate you. And we believe in you. Yeah, we believe in you. Take care. See you soon.